Hello everyone, my name is Arohi. So guys, in my today's video, I will teach you how to train a simple neural network. And first we will understand how to create a simple neural network. After creating a neural network, I will show you how to train that neural network on custom data set. After training the model, we will evaluate that model and we will finally save that trained model. So let's start. So guys, first thing is, to open command prompt and then enter in the drive where you're working. So my separate environment is in this folder. Right now I am activating the environment. Now let's start the Jupyter notebook. Okay. So now, this kind of page you will get, all right? So my today's code is present in this folder, video three, let's open it. And under that, I have another code, uh, this folder with the name of custom, open that. And this is the Jupyter notebook, which I'm going to open now where I have my code. So let's start. So let's open this Jupyter notebook. Guys, before that, the important thing is to understand the data set, the data set which we are going to use for our today's class. Okay, so that data set is in this folder. This, let's open it. And under that, we have three folders train, val, and test. Let's open the train folder. Here, you can see we have two folders daisy and dandelion. And if you'll open this daisy folder, you will see the images of daisy flower. And if you open this dandelion folder over here, you will see the images related to that name. In the same way, inside val also, we have two folders and these two folders have uh, related images. And in test folder also, we have daisy and dandelion and we have sub folders and we have images in it. Okay, so this is how um, our data set looks like. This data set is for image classification so in my today's class i'm going to show you how to perform image classification by building a simple neural network okay using pytorch now let's go back to the code so this is the jupyter notebook and let me increase the size of this jupyter notebook first so our today's problem is we will perform image classification for two classes the class names are daisy and dandelion and you need to install this scikit-learn library and if numpy is not installed then install that as well we need matplotlib also so you can install these three libraries after that i'm importing all these required modules and now guys here i have used this torch.manual seed so why I'm using this manual seed? This is for reproducibility. So suppose the results which I'm going to show you in my today's class and you want to have the same results, then we use this random seed. So now here is class simple nn. We are creating this class which inherits this nn dot module. Uh, this is a, a you know a base PyTorch module and in this we have this function and this function in this function here you can see in this line so fc1 i have used this name over here so this is fully connected layer one so what we are doing is in this class we are building a simple neural network and in that neural network the first layer is this fc1 fully connected layer and here i'm calling the nn dot linear class and this is the input size of the image and this is the output features i want what i want is we will provide the input of size height and width of the image this and three means colored image rgb image okay and this 128 means that the this uh, after after this layer the output of this layer should be 128 features and then we have this ReLU layer, ReLU is an activation function. So over here in this line, we are calling nn.relu class, okay? So this is the activation function. After that, we have another fully connected layer 
and this fully connected layer so guys so always remember that the output of the previous layer will become the input to the next layer and the output of the previous layer is 128 feature maps so now that becomes the input to the next fully connected layer and the output of this fully connected layer should be output layer with two classes daisy and dandelion okay so if you have three classes you will write that over here and if you chose to have different features over here those features the number you use here that number you have to write over here because the output of the previous class will become the input to the next class and here you will write the classes uh, the classification classes so in my case we are working on two classes so that's why i wrote two okay and then we have another activation function which is a softmax activation function and this softmax function will provide the probability values to each class okay the output of this layer will become to uh, will become an input to this and over here we'll provide the probability to each class okay which is like this will give you like 40% chances are there that this image belongs to dandelion class and 60% chances are there that this image belongs to uh, daisy class like this and then we have this forward function so here we have defined the forward function and in this forward func function over here we are first flattening the image and we want the image uh should be reshape like this okay batch size and then the color and then height and width of the image and once we flatten the image that image becomes the input to the next layer which is fc1 what is fc1 the fully connected layer the first fully connected layer of the network and on that we are applying a relu activation function okay and after that in the next layer we have fc2 which is this the second um, second fully connected layer and once the second fully connected layer have the output we are applying the softmax activation function on it so this is our simple neural network architecture this is a simple neural network which we are going to use so we will provide our data set to this simple nn class and we will train our uh, model okay so now in this cell over here so guys here i'm using this transforms dot compose class of pytorch this transform dot compose class is responsible to perform transformations on the input okay so what is the input to our uh, model over here the images so these are the three different transformations i want to perform on the images before passing that data to the model okay so first is i want to resize all the images to size this and then we are converting those images into a tensors and after that we are normalizing it okay so we have defined that these are the three different transformations we want to perform on the input data all right now we have a custom data set class this data set um, class will have uh, the details of your custom data set let's see what it is there okay so you can see in this init function we have roots and transform this this root here is root directory of your data set and this image folder is responsible to you know fetch the data and uh, whatever the sub folder name is suppose the dandelion images are there in dandelion folder so it will pick the images and it will also provide the class label uh, which is a sub folder name in this case okay so all the images which are present in a dandelion folder will have the class label as dandelion and all the images which are present in daisy folder will have the class label as daisy okay so all that work this image folder will do it itself and then we are using transform because we want to resize all the images to size 256 into 256 and then we can want to convert the images into tensor and then we want to normalize it and this is what we are do doing here and then over here we are just checking the length of samples the number of samples so this this is how this custom data set uh, class works now guys here in these four lines what we are doing is we will load 
the training data and the validation data okay so that we can provide that data set to a um, model a simple neural network so we have two data loaders one is train loader and the test loader this train data loader is responsible to load the training data and this test data loader is responsible to load the test data so there's one thing to note over here see that in training loader we are using shuffle true and in test loader we are using the shuffle false so why this shuffle is true in train loader because uh, we want to shuffle the training data when epoch y epoch uh, when we train the model we want to shuffle the data so that uh, our algorithm can learn more properly but while testing we don't need to shuffle the data because we are just performing the testing and batch size is 64 in both the loaders and here we are loading the training data set what is this training data set here you can see what is here so we are calling this custom data set class and the root is our data set training folder so you can go back here and you can see that inside this folder we have a train folder right so this is the train data set and over here we are loading the val data set and that's what we are passing here so this line these four lines are responsible to load the data set once we load the data set here remember guys what is this simple nn simple nn is the class which we have defined above this is our simple neural network uh, which will perform the image classification problem okay so that we have this is uh, we are using this loss function uh, this loss function is used uh, when you want to perform multi-class classification and then we are using our optimizer adam optimizer has been used and the learning rate is this guys you can try with different optimizers you can change the learning rate values and you can see how it affects your uh, training so we have our simple neural network in this variable now and our loss function which will calculate the loss after every uh, epoch and we will update the weights that loss function is this and this optimizer is this in this and we want to train our model for 50 epochs and this list is responsible to um, store all the training losses after every epoch and this is responsible to uh, save all the losses while validating the data and then we are running the epochs for 50 times model tree is training and you can see this is all the training process we are providing inputs to the model and then using the loss function we are calculating the loss and then there is a backward pass and we have a optimizer optimizer will update the weights so this is how it's going on right so this is this is for training and here we are evaluating the model by using model.eval while training what we have used we have used model.train and while evaluating the validation data the, at that time we are using this dot eval okay and after that guys so this is just what we are doing we are training and we are validating and then we are storing those losses in these two lists okay so here we have another model uh, another function with the name of evaluate model and all predictions and all labels all predictions means the predictions by the models and all labels mean the actual label which we have of the data set right so here using this we are calculating the accuracy precision recall and f1 square okay how on the basis of this list and the, this list actual labels and the predicted labels using these two we are calculating all these matrices and guys this line is responsible to plot the results and th this will uh, plot the training loss and the validation loss that i will show you in some time and here using this line we can save the trained model okay now let me show you the results see you can see here this is the first epoch in the first epoch training loss is this and the validation loss is this in the same way we have trained our model for 50 epochs and at 50th epoch this is the training loss and this is the validation loss and accuracy of our model is this 
precision, recall and F1 score is this. Guys, first let's understand what is training loss and validation loss. So training loss is the loss computed on the training data set during training phase and validation loss is the loss computed on separate validation data set which is not used for training and it helps uh, you know monitor if the model is overfitting or underfitting so the goal during training is to decrease both training and validation loss while achieving uh, you know good values for evaluation matrices so if suppose if our training loss decreases but the validation loss increases it might indicate overfitting so you can see here in our results just see here let's open this graph here you can see the training loss decreases over epochs indicated that model is learning from the training data right but the validation uh, loss decreased initially you can see here decreased initially but it starts to you know it's it it started slightly increasing over here right which suggests that there is a potential overfitting problem over here because training data uh, loss of training data is decreasing and the loss of validation data is not decreasing okay so how you can solve this problem now uh, what i am saying is that here is a case of overfitting overfitting simply means when your algorithm perform well on training data but it is not performing well on validation data so in our case our, our algorithm is performing well on training data but on validation data it is not performing well right because here you can see that the training loss at the 50th epoch is 35 but the validation loss is 65 right so now what you can do is how we can improve the model right so there are there are various things which you can try suppose for example you can augment your data set increase the data set and then train the model or you can fine tune the uh, hyperparameters you can change the different learning you can change the learning rate value and then try the code or you can use uh, you know dropout there are various different things which you can try to improve the model's performance but as this is just a uh, you know starting lecture on the neural networks we are not going to focus on that our today's goal is to create a simple neural network and then to train that neural network and then to understand what is training loss and validation loss and how to read those losses so i hope you understood that after training the model how to what is training loss and what is validation loss just remember guys on the basis of validation loss we um we we can know that how well our model is working so over here we can simply conclude that our model is not so good because it's doing good on training data but it's not doing good on validation data okay so um, i hope this video is helpful the code um link is mentioned github is link is mentioned you can try this code even the data set link is also mentioned you can download the same data set and you can try this code at your own okay so i hope this video is helpful thank you for watching